Hey, what's happening, Storm Chasers? Welcome to another episode of Echo Craft! Echo, Echo, Echo! Today, we've got a couple things we're going to be working on. That always cracks me up. I don't know why. <laughs> I just enjoy doing that. Echo, Echo! Anyway, today we've got a few things that we're going to be working on. And I'm trying to keep from spoiling the rest of the episode, because I'm actually recording this after I've gotten everything else done. I'm actually getting ready to edit the video and realize that I didn't record the intro. Uh, oopsie! <laughs> but <laughs> we're going to be working on a few different things here in the park, and we're going to be working on some stuff over the industrial district today. So get ready and buckle up for the ride. We're back here at my super smelter, guys, because uh, I screwed up in my last episode in a very, very big way. <laughs> Uh, oops, <laughs> blonde moment. But what I did was I put all the hoppers on the tops of the furnaces and didn't think about the fact that that's going to put everything into the top slot where that stone is at. And it didn't give me a chance to get any fuel in. Now that I'm stuck in here, come on, let me up. Thank you. Then out. That hurt. I had to go through, take all those hoppers back out, and you can see I've ran the powered rails. They're connected in back here, and this is the line that the items need to be smelted to. The other hoppers go up. I've raised the platform uh, that the bamboo goes on and flows across and put fence gates in to hold the water. That way it doesn't flow back and get stuck and despawn. But this little uh, circuit right here first time I saw it was used by Mumbo Jumbo in Hermitcraft 6 on his super smelter. Basically the way it works is you put the number of items in here that you have for your furnaces. You have a comparator running into that or out of it rather. It detects the signal from the hopper. And then this little piece right here, this little signal, detects the signal from the hopper minecart. Which, when the hopper minecart matches the hopper, it depowers this, which break, which pulls this uh, fence gate back, and allows the hopper minecart to keep on going. And it just travels around, deposits everything in there. So if you're you did decide to build that and you're having problems, there's the fix for it. Alrighty, guys, we've got our our super smelter stuff fixed up now. We've got all the bugs worked out of it, I think. And so I'm going to go ahead and build the shell around it to make it look like an office building that's sticking out of the side of the mountain. And I'm going to do that in the form of a third person time lapse. And it's finished. I admit, let me grab some food there because I'm getting hungry right there. I gotta admit, I like the way it turned out. And I'm really excited to see the way it'll look once Miyu is able to get over here and do the terraforming above it. And make it to where it truly looks like it's sticking out the side of the mountain. But I'm very pleased with that. We're gonna head over there. Okay, that honestly is going to bug me just a little bit. Let me let me take care of this real quick. 
And then we're going to go over there and it won't be another time lapse, but we're going to work on something over in the uh, theme park there. All right, we're back over here at the theme park here, guys. And as I mentioned last episode, I want to work on the park entrance today. So I'm going to use netherrack just to kind of shape out the, f the shell of what I want it to look like. And hopefully, please don't blow up. Please don't blow up. Thank you. And we will pop back in here once. Oh, no. Not good. Not good. I really need someone to sleep right now. But, <laughs> as I was saying, I'll come back once I've gotten this all laid out as far as how I want the shell of it to look. The outside edge of it. And I'll see you then. The shell is in place. So here's basically what it's going to look like. Let me fly over here. I better watch out. I've only got one rocket left in my inventory here. Or in my hot bar. But I wanted to keep the natural look of it. And so, decided to make it to where it kind of melted in. Let me grab some more rockets out of my chest. Not up rockets all together. AFK my creeper farm over there for a little while. There we go. But I wanted to keep that natural look, so I made it to where it will just kind of look like it's molded into it. I'm going to take some stone and patch that hole right there up to where you can't see in it. And then I'm going to go through and replace every bit of this nether rack. Why did I do that? I'll fix that in a minute. But I'll go through and fix every bit of the nether rack, change it out to white concrete. And nether, or not nether rack. <laughs> nether rack's not out yet. We're in 115, not 1.16, Weasel. And andersite. That's the word I'm after. Yeah, andersite. <laughs> but... I'm going to get that done, and I'll show you what it looks like here in a second. Well, guys, we've got the entranceway pretty well finished up to my liking. Let's see if I can land on the portal. All right. Got my personal coat of arms there right on that. It's just a creeper skull with a border on it. But you got the entrance gates to where they come in right here. Walk across the pressure plate, and they're in the park. But I've also got a special surprise right there. Echo Ventures. And so we begin. I'm going to take some time next week to be working on this area right here. We're going to finish up this entrance section. And probably start on one of the rides. Or one of the attractions, I guess. It's not really a ride. But I'll explain a little bit more about that next episode. But now I need to go over and work on a much needed farm in my industrial district. So I'm going to pop over there and then I'll get things set up and be right back with you. So the much needed addition to my industrial district has to do with this mob spawner right here. Of course working on a theme park involves roller coasters at some point. Which means that I need scaffolding to do it correctly. And that's going to require string. As of right now, I've got a little bit of string, but not enough for the quantity we need. So we're going to build a string farm. And this particular one was designed by a YouTuber named Daedalus822. I'll put a link to his video down in the description if you want to build it yourself. But first thing we got to do is dig out a 9x9 cube around this spawner. So I'm going to get that taken care of and pop back. We've dug the 9x9 cube out, and the next step, as we're continuing to follow that tutorial there, is to dig out the viewing room, which is going to be on this side right here. I'm going to go ahead and complete the rest of the tutorial, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. You may wonder why we're staring at a white wall right now. It's from a few seconds ago. Welcome to the bunker. <laughs> this is our collection system, storage system for the string. And right up here, we've got the decoration as far as where we're going to stand. The only thing that's left to do is to put the water in. I'm going to take these torches out. And, oh, no, I forgot a slab. Uh-oh. Let me put a piece of glass right here. And put a slab up top there. And then I put the water in and hopefully not get killed. I'll leave the recording going while I'm working on this. 
but because I need to be able to concentrate on what I'm doing, I probably won't say much and edit it out unless something happens. So let's just pull her up right here. And I forgot that I need to do that that way. Okay, I've got some diorite I can use. So I'm going to take this top one off and place down the slab. And here we go. Just do that. What this is doing is converting the powder in the walls to regular concrete. And it should start spawning stuff here in just a minute, which is not ideal to be perfectly honest because I'm not quite ready yet. Let me see. Yeah, I've got some torches on me. So let's light this up right here. Just so that we can prevent getting spawns right now. And then I'll take those torches out in just a couple minutes. Alright, there's that. So that side is ready to go. Ouch, don't walk across the magma weasel, that hurts. Okay, we'll put the first water stream right here. Oh, it didn't get all of it. And I'm really running the risk of spiders right now, but there's really not a whole lot I can do about that. Have to light it back up as we get it finished and cleared here. So, just waiting on the water streams to die down. There we go. Now, over here, one more corner to go. Let's see, right there, right there right there. Now I have all the walls converted to concrete. And now all that we've got to do is put water streams in these corners. So I'm going to put one bucket there, one there, one there, and one there. And then I've got to remove these torches and I'm going to switch to ender pearls because once I remove these, they're going to start spawning pretty quick. Right like that. And they got me. So let's see if we can get up out of here. Alright, there we go. And I need to eat. Hopefully, no, okay. They took me down to half a part. I forgot they don't take all of your health. We'll just kind of sit here and eat for a second. And our spider farm should be working okay why is there a block right there that's not covered by that that's unusual okay let me remove these blocks that torch right there and that should darken that room up enough by doing that there we go and now we're going to go down and check our um, uh, yeah, hopper, our cart, chest, whatever this is. <laughs> and we're collecting string from it, so we're moving right along. I am going to AFK here for a bit, and I'll check back in after, oh, about half an hour or so. I AFK'd overnight, and I went down, checked my chest and everything, and the file that I recorded, the audio got corrupted. But overnight, I got a full double chest, my hopper's backed up. And it completely filled up the system. So I'm I'm satisfied with how it turned out. I'm going to switch over to the minigame district real quick because I want to show you something. Here we are in the minigame district. And what I want to show you is this right here. Isn't that just a handsome build? I mean, look at it. Oh, I better watch out or I'm going to fly into him. <laughs> Would that be counted as flying? Oh, what was that? Would that be counted as flying into myself, I wonder? Hmm. But, I mean, just, just look at that face up there. Let's, let's see if I can get both of us in the shot here. And that face just the handsomest thing ever? Anyway, what's going on is I have a certain reputation on the server as dying a lot. I can't imagine why. The simple fact that I have... Oh, where did it go? I 
can never find this when I'm trying to record. Uh, no players killed. Times killed is what I'm looking for. It's somewhere on this first screen and I can never find it. But it's like a hundred right there. Nope, that's interactions with Danville. Anyway, I have like 120 deaths at this point. And so everyone is betting on how many times I will die over the course of this week. It was actually supposed to start the day that this came out, and I got really behind on my editing. So, it's actually been going for a couple, three days now. But Lucid built this amazing little jack-in-the-box there, and uh, named it Pop Goes the Weasel for the minigame. So, be sure to tune in for the next episode to see... Oh, what is this? That looks interesting. To see who wins... And until next time, guys, batten down the hatches, and I will see you later.